Welcome back to Cards Against Humanity. We each made questions for the rest of the group, and today we respond to those questions using only Pokemon from Gen 1. The answers? Crazy. The debate? Hilarious. No answer is a wrong answer. Coming this fall, an all-new murder mystery documentary finally exposing the truth about this Pokemon. We have Chansey. <laughs> <laughs> we have Hypno. Oh, what happened? <laughs> and we have Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> What's your reasoning on Chansey? All right. <laughs> Okay. Okay, sit down. okay, shut up. But this freak. The side of the side. <laughs> that is if Chansey was salad fingers. This Pokemon here, that egg is dead. That's only half an egg. Whoa. The rest of yeah. it is stuffed oh with my. the corpse of what is now rotting in Whoa. it. Oh. And so it's just sitting there thinking, and it goes home at the end of the day, and it, and it looks like this, being just eaten <laughs> away by guilt and shame. It looks like he's out of Don't Starve Together, except the egg. It does. Mm. Absolutely it does. Does. Starve. But the egg did starve. But <laughs> <laughs> who had the argument for Hypno? That would be me. Yay. I would just like to say I don't think that Mr. <laughs> Hypno has been doing therapy with a license. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what uh, that's, that's what's been coming out. I think his good night babies comes without proper certification. He has clients and he just doesn't even tell them. It, there's nothing on his wall to say that he should be doing what he's doing. <laughs> Peter, what's your argument for Onyx? I just imagine there's these detectives that show up at the crime scene and there's just this brutally smashed just flat corpse like on the side <laughs> oh, of the road oh <laughs> no mercy you guys have dark thoughts about these questions just like no they just i just imagine they have the lineup and just onyx is in the start. lineup like gee i wonder who did this there's a gaping hole in the ground and we don't know what this is about but we'll find Boss, the i couldn't get him in handcuffs i don't know what to tell you <laughs> i'm gonna go with chancy because I, that one is immediately <laughs> dark at heart to the point I need to watch that. I need the info. Yes, mom. If this Pokemon were to jump off a bridge, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> we have got Venonet. <laughs> also submitted Firo. Oh, <laughs> and last but certainly not least was Ditto. <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> All right, Venonet, who are you? That's me, and I'll just say based on the photos, I think it's a Obvious. I just think he's cute. So I'm like, you know what? If he's going, I'm going too. <laughs> I told you I didn't think hard about these guys. <laughs> I get it. I could have chose a flying Pokemon. I probably wouldn't die, but you're definitely in the top three. Firo, what do we got? My argument is not because it has wings or can fly or anything. My argument is simply because Firo once told me there's nothing to Firo except Firo itself. And since then, <laughs> and since oh then. God. Firo has helped me face my Firos. <laughs> okay, that was that was well thought out. And Josh, ditto. Yeah. So this little guy, I, I imagine, I imagine he came up to me and he goes, "My whole life, you've been commanding me and telling me to do things and moves. Just do one move that I do." And I said, "Okay, what do you want me to do?" And he jumps off the bridge, and as he jumps, he goes, "Ditto." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow. dang, he got dang. me. So, so I had to use his one move and copy his move, and therefore I jumped. So it was against your will, kind of. I, I gave the guy a handshake. We were, I, I'm a where I'm a respectable hey, trainer. Hey, you gave him a handshake. Where <laughs> on his little nub? <laughs> on that nub? Are you <laughs> sure that little nub was his hand? <laughs> I am not. Uh, I really got to give this one to Zane for overcoming his pharaohs. Yeah. I love that pharaoh <laughs> itself. <laughs> so, yeah, the the image that I linked whispers in your ear. Don't be afraid, kid. <laughs> if I'm not wrong, also, he has an abnormally long beak that can, like, reach pretty far. So I imagine he's, like, five feet away from me. Yeah, oh, exactly. over the close up. <laughs> he's out you of frame. Walk. Walk. <laughs> Which Pokemon has a body pillow with anime girls on it? <laughs> your answers were Dome Fossil, Lickitung, <laughs> and Gloom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I he is yucky. Him. That's fair. Dome Fossil, why don't you go first? Yeah, I submitted Dome Fossil for this one because <laughs> I know that guy. He's a creep. I went over to his house for brunch. He's a creep. He invited me over to his apartment for brunch once. 
<laughs> so where his bathroom was. He said down the hall to the right. I went down the hall to the left. I accidentally went into oh, his no. room. The smut this guy is into, let me tell you. Oh, my you. gosh. <laughs> I'm just imagining you, like, having to talk to him about it and him blushing yeah. really hard. Well, I mean, he's rock hard the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. That's terrible to hear. Uh, Nick Tong? I don't know how far you want me to go into the description, guys, <laughs> but I immediately looked at him and went, wow, that's a creep weeb. Do you think like a tongue's a weeb? I think so. <laughs> that, yeah, no, no, that, that tracks. That's good for me. And then how about gloom? Your photo helps me more than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I almost don't want to give an argument because that's too good. Come on, guys. Why do you think he's always drooling? <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sad because he's outside. <laughs> he's a, right. he, he wants to go back into his room. That's what he wants. I miss my body pillows. Oh. I'm going to go with Zane on Gloom. I wow. think that was really good. Thank that's, you. That's Thank great you. Job. That's really mm -hmm. good. Blank is flirting with Blank. And so first was Nido Queen is flirting with boyfriends. <laughs> of course <Okay>. she is. <laughs> of course. That's true. <laughs> Next we got Metapod is flirting with Hakuna. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We're pushing the boundaries of what YouTube keeps <laughs> monetizing, <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> No, these can stay. <laughs> There's a difference between these things can stay and these things yeah. won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody is flirting with Jinx. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, beans. I want to hear why Nido Queen is flirting with boyfriends. <laughs> I think it's self-explanatory. <laughs> I have the card in front of me. It's clearly true. Nido Queen could use the move boyfriends in order to deal more damage. Nido Queen and the boyfriends were the original ship for Gen 1. Canonically, <laughs> you are so correct. Thank you. Why is Metapod flirting with Kakuna? I'm curious. I, my, I don't know which one's stiffer. But oh. I <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Why is nobody flirting with our most kissed? Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, I think I think, <laughs> I think, you, I think you said it yourself, Josh. This one really just kind of speaks for itself. I, I, I think I could probably ask a thousand people and tell them that they had to flirt with that thing or pull the trigger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, Josh! Josh, you've brought up some raw feelings on this question. question. <laughs> my question. I'm giving it to Will. Yippee! Oh. <laughs> I, am, I thought I had this settled before. Before it even started, then my fight or flight kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> and you flew, man. <laughs> I flew. This Pokemon is definitely just three Rattatas stacked on top of each other in disguise. <laughs> For this one, we got Execute. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx? <No. laughs> and we got Rhyhorn. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I love the rye horn. <laughs> What's the thought process on execute? I just thought execute was really funny because like the heart of this question is like surprise. There's actually three Pokemon inside of this one Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> but with execute, it's like if there's three Pokemon inside of them, then like that's that's one rat for every two eggs. Right. <laughs> so, like, just right. Is he six <laughs> eggs? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I hate that. Peter, it's a You're rat. Way too ready with that. It's just a rat sitting in an egg. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> What's the reasoning on Jinx? I know we sort of talked about as you're looking at the uh, cross section of Jinx, the dress is a part of the Pokemon, but it's actually not. It actually is the three Rattatas and they do have the dress <laughs> to cover up the two extra Rattatas and all the makeup is really just the top Rattata that's getting dressed up for the night. Could you imagine for real though, if that's the case, right? Three Rattatas make up Jinx. There are two that have gotten to hide their face and one that has had to be bullied for the last like 20 25 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Rhyhorn. What's the reasoning on Rhyhorn? They were trying to sneak into a fun event. They were like, oh, you know what? It would be great if we went in as Rhydon. Mm. But instead, <laughs> everybody was like, oh, it's Rhydon. They were coming in and, and they fell over onto their four <laughs> legs. And they were like, wait a minute. 
Rhyhorn, we don't, we hate you. You're not, <laughs> you're not an evolved Pokemon. Get out of here, loser. They kicked him to the curb, and that's when they discovered. Wait a minute, it's just three Rattatas. Genius. Oh. So the, so Rhyhorn actually blew their cover. Yes. Yeah, so they were Rhydon, which was accepted, became Rhyhorn, <laughs> which wasn't accepted, and then became the three Rattatas, which they just said, this is stupid now. Leave. I'm truthfully gonna have to give this one to Peter because I love the idea of rats <laughs> cramming into multiple eggs to make up that Pokemon. <laughs> they are pulling a lot of legwork there to pull that one off. And if they fool us, they deserve it. Honestly, I think now, cause there's six eggs, right? I think one is doing two eggs. That one is the broken egg, the like half-assed <laughs> rat. And then there's another rat that has to take on three eggs to pull Pick up weight. the slack. <laughs> Ratatouille would have been a better movie if instead of a rat, it was about this Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Golbat. <laughs> <laughs> New bone. Oh no. Oh. And Machoke. Of course. <laughs> oh, of course. What do you mean, of course? <laughs> of course. Uh, who hit us with the gold bat? All right. Elevator pitch, everybody. Get ready. Golbatatui. A French bat <laughs> teams up with a young kitchen worker at a famous Paris restaurant. The main difference between the original and this movie is instead of the rat under the hat pulling the strings, there's a gold bat under the hat sinking its fangs into the man's head. In this gut-wrenching psych thriller, our young kitchen worker has only moments to create the perfect dish in order to win enough money for a bat removal surgery before the gold bat fully drains him into a piece of linguine. That's a reference. You'll love, you'll cry, you'll learn how many real-life hours it takes a bat to drain a full-size human. The man gets thinner, the five-foot bat on his head gets heavier, a true nail-biter until the very end. I didn't know we were writing wow. scripts. Yeah, you really <laughs> prepared for these. Yeah, <laughs> really no, no. showed us. Cubone, who submitted that one? My little guy, my little homie. So what I honestly think is that the movie is almost perfection. It is mm. almost there, mm. but with the added layer of trauma and childhood grief, you could elevate this movie to not only a silly, goofy, fun kid flick, but to something that can connect on a deeper level with people who have experienced true trauma. So I think would become 10 times better with a little guy with a little trauma. Aww. I mean, yeah, that's a trauma? Pixar staple. That's high quality. Quality. And uh, Will Machoke? In a similar vein, I also want to have trauma be a part of the story, but this no. is to give people trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Machoke okay. Chewy, actually. Machoke Chewy. Machoke Chewy is, is where we're headed with this. Hey, that I think the slapstick horrible. Uh, answer to having Machoke sitting on the shoulders of Linguini the entire time <laughs> would create a very interesting <laughs> dynamic throughout a Pixar motion picture. <laughs> I'm imagining you, you've got to have a scene from Ghost in there with the pottery. <laughs> he eventually takes off this belt after being very resistant to actually helping Linguini with the meals and Linguini <laughs> getting very tired in the shoulders from carrying the whole Machoke. And eventually Machoke says, fine, I'll help you, you goon, and takes off his belt. And then he unleashes his cooking prowess and saves the day. Oh, Machoke oh. Chewy. Machoke because Chewy was needs mad. to stop being said. Right, Machoke Chewy <laughs> is the name of the film, Zane. What do you want from me? Machoke Chewy sequel, railed by recipes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, oh, she geez. gives a whole new definition that the kitchen is slammed. <laughs> yep. I just cannot get the thought of Machoke specifically <laughs> sitting on the shoulders of Linguini, like Gosh. pulling his hair, punching him around. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, but taking off the belt to go turbo mode. That it's is just a... the, the cherry on the cake. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't know he's up there because he has the hat on. Yeah. <laughs> his hat is giant. <laughs> I just, I love the idea of him just trying to hide it too. Like I Skinner do. just yeah. ripping off the hat. Like, I know you haven't little... been choking the kitchen. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know you know I'm rude about the chokes in the kitchen. <laughs> no machokes. Linguini, did you get seven feet taller? <laughs> did you make oh, another machoka chewy, Linguini? <laughs> Flashback to the mom making machoka chewy. <laughs> At the end. <laughs> no one wants to talk about the fact that this Pokemon carried Gen 1. And your guys' answers were Far Fetched, <laughs> Porygon, <laughs> and Victory Bell. <laughs> this is the HD rendering of Porygon. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the 4K oh, rendering of Far Fetched. <laughs> this is in the in the crime scene shows when they say enhance, this is what you get. <laughs> that's a good enhance. Point. Enhance. You enhance. see that guy right there? Enhance. 
<laughs> Enhance again. Oh, that's a duck. That's a mallard. Okay, I would like Porygon to start first. You got it, Chief. So the reason why this Pokemon carry Gen 1 is because it got children more involved into Pokemon than ever before. When this thing aired on television, it was so <laughs> awesome that it gave so many kids seizures out of pure joy <laughs> from the flashing lights on the screen. No one so, talk about the fact that Porygon carried the children to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It got well, Pokemon. In, it, it shot it into the mainstream, not even the mainstream stream entertainment but healthcare if you're I right no one did want to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> if <you're just> <laughs> Wow. That's true. Not only that, but Porygon carried the Pokemon franchise on its back because it was actually Pikachu who did that to all those kids. And where would the show be without <laughs> Pikachu? That's a good point. So he's oh. carrying the weight of Pikachu's sins. Victory Bell? See, they may call Pikachu the mascot of Japan, but Victory Bell was for sure the mascot of Gen 1. I, I just, the horrific mm. streak followed by eating James every single time <laughs> it was released from captivity was comedy gold and was the glue that held the entire show together. You cannot convince me otherwise. It was a big yeah. awakening for some people. <laughs> <laughs> For some of us, I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> and lastly, Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd carried Pokemon on its back uh, because it's one of the main okay. Gen 1 Pokemon <laughs> that uh, people what were just that, waiting for it to evolve oh. for yeah, years true. and true. years. We finally did get Surfetch'd in Sword and Shield based evolution. You know, Farfetch'd really just kept people coming back year after year. Did they give it an evolution? No. Did they give it an evolution? Not yet. Oh, they did it. And now that, yeah, that, that's why it's dropping off now that Surfetch'd. No <laughs> right. Ah, yeah, screw it. I'm gonna give it to Farfetch. I just like Let's him for the prop go. comedy. Oh no! Nice. I, I, I do you. think that he honestly is like a very slept on Pokemon that is, was a very great addition to Gen One. I think Victory mm. Bell was great for the slapstick. I think Porygon was great for the epilepsy. I love <laughs> Farfetch for the longitude that he has. Blank is feeling vicious and wants to take a bite. The first one that was submitted was God. Magnemite is vicious and wants to take a bite. <laughs> It's a sad Magnemite. He's dead. His eye is gone. What happened? Magnosite. Magnosite. Oh, oh, no. The, the next one is Chansey is vicious and wants to <laughs> Okay, oh mine is fine. God. Oh. Why does that look like a monster that would be in the Stitch category of monsters? It's more like Jabba's third cousin. Yeah. And then lastly, it was Poliwhirl is vicious and wants to take a bite. <laughs> I think that's a Poliwrap. <laughs> I think so. Too. <laughs> Nobody can tell the difference. Okay. This, is, this is what I got. I would like to hear why Magnemite is vicious and wants to take a bite. Before I saw this very depressing picture of Magnosite, um, I I was thinking that he got so mad that he evolved to have a mouth, and that that that's how mad he was. He got so vicious he grew a mouth. He's got a mouth he now. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, I mean it's a hole. You're right. I've really right. gotten more of this. You know, you know when they you know when they say of entry. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's kind of like a right. see at all, so he just gets a mouth now. Why does this beautiful <laughs> ew, 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 <laughs> say, yeah. oh, that's, so, that's so annoying to look at. I hate it so much. Why does it have to be center mass like an Eminem costume? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I guess. Why does this gorgeous Chansey, why are they vicious and want to take a bite? Again, I think your photos are helping me more than the, more than I anticipated. I think Chansey's been holding it in for years now. Chansey's been at the Pokemon Center. She's seen many Pokemon come and go. She's watched them all recover. Oh, I think you can foolish. tell from the photo now, Chansey just cannot hold in that craze anymore. Chansey's gotta have a bite. Chansey's looking at these Pokemon come in and is like, you're safe, you're safe, you're safe, but what if? And it's finally breaking. She says, no, no. And she's like green goblining from the first Spider-Man where she looks in the mirror and like there's a part of Chansey that's like, you gotta bite him. And oh. she's like, no. It's like what happens when you don't feel, when you feed a gremlin after midnight. This is the Chansey that Chansey sees in the mirror. Why does this high res, super cool Poliwhirl, why are they vicious and why do they want to take a bite? Poliwhirl ain't got no mouth. He's dreamed of it ever since he evolved, right? When he was a Poliwag, he loved the experience of biting, but when he evolved, he's never gonna have that again. He needs you to help him fulfill his dreams. You wouldn't say Aww. no to that face. Look at him. He just wants a little nibble. Just give Aww. him a little bite. Give him a little trombone bite. slap? Does trombone he have a trombone? <laughs> 
That's, is that canonical Pokemon that he plays the trombone? <laughs> he plays it out his nostril, too, because he doesn't have a mouth to blow through. <laughs> trombone slap? It says your opponent's active Pokemon is now that, confused, and so am I. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give it to the fact that it is almost horror-esque that Poliwhirl doesn't have a mouth, and it's kind of scary. <laughs> Screw cars. All I need to get around is this Pokemon. You sent me Arcanine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's cosplay? Machamp. <laughs> and the cuffing. <laughs> Is that there an underwater water mine? I see no what difference. Sea mine. What's the reasoning on Arcanine? Remember when I said I didn't think very hard about these? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think Arcanine's cool and I would like to ride on him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is the most fair thing I could have heard. Arcanine. It was the it was the very first one that I chose. And I answered, I was like, oh, what would be cool to do instead of a car? Uh, ride on Arcanine's back. Thanks. Why well, am a champ? <laughs> well, okay. This one, I thought kind of, you know, Almost self explain I mean, think here, here's the thing. This guy. <laughs> oh, God. You, guys, you don't need a vehicle when you can just be thrown. Can I go to, can I go to the <laughs> store quick? And then he just hucks you across, like, so, you know. So he's not carrying you. He is tossing you. Yeah, oh he's, he's so like throwing you. Car. Talk about well, a rough yeah. landing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to worry about traffic, sidewalks, <laughs> running into anybody. You I mean, just you're have just to worry about Yeah, you don't have to survival. worry about anything. Literally, <laughs> all of your worries go out the window. And why coughing? What if you never had to pay? Pay for gas again. <laughs> Screw having a car. I just need gas. <laughs> exactly. And who? Which Pokemon is full of more hot gas <laughs> than coughing? <laughs> so, so this guy's just spewing it. First of all, <laughs> good point, Will. Second of all, <laughs> so you're saying screw the car that I keep running out of gas on. Let me just take all the gas in the world. No more car, just all the gas in the world. <laughs> you know how like you're going to go to your car and you're like, it ain't got no gas in it. Well, you're never gonna be saying that. <laughs> with coughing. My only argument is that Peter ignored the beginning of the question where Zane said, screw cars. Screw That's cars, I, I, I just I'm need gas for I'm cars. Saying, I'm screw saying you cars, I just need more <laughs> gas for it. I'm not saying you need the gas for screw your car. Screw cars. All I need I'm is saying, this Pokemon to get more car gas. No, no, no. You know no, that no. we were going to tear apart Josh, this one in specific? <laughs> Josh, you're misinterpreting me. I'm not saying the gas is for your car. I'm saying that your gas runs out of car. What? Here, here's the, here's Wait, the thing. Peter, here's no, no, that was good. No, you're onto something. Keep that going. Peter, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you 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 Mr. Cars run out of gas, but coughing never runs out of gas. For your car. Cars. No, not for the car. You try gas. to put coughing gas in a car. I need car for my gas. One coughing <laughs> equals unlimited gas is insane. That's crazy. How many coughings are there? Why aren't so, you driving anymore? Because I have unlimited gas. But don't you need gas for your car? I don't need yeah, a car when I got gas. gas. On this one thing. So, so, would so, coughing yeah. turn in, in this, in this world we're creating here, Peter, <laughs> would coughings turn into just like slaves for gasoline Listen. so that we can all drive our cars? <laughs> it's Ooh, they, you know, because we screw cars. Gas from the coughing and put it in the car. It's like the SpongeBob <laughs> bag of winds where you grab onto it and he propels you everywhere with oh, the, the narrative shift. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I vote for Peter. <laughs> All right, Will, Will votes Peter. I think Josh votes Peter. I'm going to have to vote for Josh. I think <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do like the idea of there's whimsy. I might land at the Publix that I'm trying to go to. I might land in Iowa. I don't know. This man is very strong. Honey, you know mommy and daddy love you very much. But apparently... Mommy loves this Pokemon a little bit more than she loves Daddy. We've got... He's back again. It's Polly Wrath this time. <laughs> <laughs> he's back, but with a vengeance. <laughs> and a mouth. Exactly. <laughs> We've also got Cloyster. My favorite wow. diva skin in Overwatch. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, wait. <laughs> and lastly, we have Diglett. <laughs> <laughs> One leg. One muscular <laughs> leg. <laughs> <laughs> Holly Rath, let's hear your argument. I wrote this in the words of being the dad. Okay, I'll role play the child for you. Listen, son, there are two things in this world mommy cares about. Children and stamina. You know the tadpole Ooh. Pokemon got oh. good swimmers. And you know the boy who can cross oh, the Pacific Ocean back insane. and forth with just his legs, which, by the way, at its greatest Ooh. width is 24,000 miles. <laughs> Ain't gonna need a breather anytime soon. Meanwhile, oh, 
Oh, jeez. Meanwhile, meanwhile, my knees crack just from <laughs> crouching. <laughs> hey, same. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Daddy? I feel like I was pretty transparent. Windows, you're saying, Daddy? <laughs> what do you mean by swimmers? <laughs> what do you mean coming up to breathe? Cloyster, you're up. Just like how some of us had a, a rude awakening about Victory Bell. Unfortunately, <laughs> son, your mother had an awakening when we were watching saw a cloister up on the screen. And I'm sorry to tell you, but she isn't interested in daddies anymore. It's going to be a big trauma for you, but it's also for me. <laughs> All right, Josh, you got a leg to stand on in this Goodness. argument. Gosh, this question really kind of <laughs> forces you. It kind of kind of forces you into like a, a position of, well, this is awkward. So, you know, Diglett, I, there's not much to say other than it kind of looks like it would be mom's best friend. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, look, man, you know what? I don't care if I get the point or not. I'm not going to go into it. It's Diglett. <laughs> looks like a thing. So that's all I got for you. You know, mom likes a little bit of mystery. I don't know what she's, <laughs> what this guy's hiding under the surface. Diglett sure has a leg up on you. <laughs> so, so I hate that picture. Because I'm still giving this one to Diglett. I genuinely like how tame Josh's was explaining it to me as a child. <laughs> what Pokemon is actually stinky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing. That's we we did get a lot of repeats in this quiz. It seems that people really liked Victory Bell. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. What the heck? I mean, Dude. I just typed in Victory Bell stinky. I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. That, like, we got the... Mr. Mime. <laughs> the man himself. Hey. And then lastly, Chansey. <laughs> That's what? gross. Why are oh, there once again? <laughs> once again. Step away from I just need finger to nails, man. I would like to hear why you, you think Victory Bell is stinky. I decided to go very scientific. This Pokemon is based on the pitcher plant. Now, the pitcher mm. plant actually lures bugs into itself with a sweet nectar that is around the rim, and then when they <laughs> fall into the into the middle, this is all for memory. I love these things as a kid. Then from there, there's actually a liquid akin to water, but is a little thicker, but it's a yes. dissolvent that, yeah, it's like an acid kind of dealy, and, and it just, like, breaks down and dissolves whatever's in there, so I figured that must be pretty stinky. Why is Mr. Mime stinky? Okay, here's my theory. As Why is he actually stinky? Aside from the fact that on this channel, he's canonically dead, and that probably smells terrible, I <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> I believe the anime's Mr. Mime never wanted to be a mime. I believe mm, his elf shoes are permanently attached, but have gathered <laughs> some horrendous staunch throughout the years to the point that nobody wanted to be near them, talk to him, or even acknowledge him. So right. Mr. Mime took on the role of being a mime as a coping mechanism, pretending that's the reason people can't talk to him or approach him. See, I always smile on the outside, but on the inside, it's just a shell of a man with some rank puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Chansey actually stinky? I hate the smell of, like, hard-boiled eggs. Chansey's constantly soft-boiling their eggs. Uh, the egg looks pretty putrid in the image that you sent, and I just noticed that those are fingers. The only other argument that I got is, uh, you know, shiny Chansey is green. Why? Because they're, uh-oh, stinky. I think I'm actually <laughs> going to say Chansey is probably very stinky. Yeah, I understand yes. the other two. These are all very good and Answers. I think Chansey's the stinkiest of all. I feel like my privacy is being violated by a blank. Number one, clefable. Goodness. Yes. You call him Number clefable? two, beyond the pronunciation. <laughs> I drowsy. Oh my gosh. And the last Pokemon, which is a return, oh is the last goodness. Pokemon to violate your privacy is Poliwhirl. Oh, wow. The we poly really said the Polyline three times. That's going to make them Beetlejuice into poly existence. <laughs> It yeah, is seriously. indeed Poliwhirl. Are we sure? It does have a picture of Poliwrath in the top corner. <laughs> it does. It really does. But as you said, they're all interchangeable. It literally shows a photo of not Poliwhirl. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing, guys. I type in what I type in, and I choose what I choose. And now you got to make an argument for it. Clefable, why would this Pokemon violate my privacy? Clefable just seems like a naked little dude. You know, he just seems like an unclothed little pudgy dude dude who wants you probably to join him i don't know <laughs> it's just kind of it's just kind of there yeah i think he's like the original child who always makes you feel a little uncomfortable no matter where you are you got games on your phone <laughs> you got games. yeah <laughs> why would drowsy violate my privacy with drowsy i'm getting friend of a friend i didn't invite to my party but stays longer than my actual friend vibes he's that guy that's gonna make super offensive jokes and then say what well, is just a joke after each one of them and then he proceeds <laughs> and then he proceeds to give my mom 
lock me eyes, but never approach <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. But never approach you, sir. And he just scrolls on Instagram, chuckling to himself in the corner. And he turns to me every now and then and say, seriously, dude, she's fit. And I'm like, stop following me. And <laughs> Stop following me into the bathroom every time I gotta go just to tell me that you have the hots for my mom, man. <laughs> More question, Josh. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Why would Polly Rat sorry, Polly Whirl <laughs> violate my privacy? Oh, I'm so glad that you picked Polly Whirl for the last question, Josh, because my answer for this hinges on that. <laughs> Look at him, you're not gonna make him <laughs> sad. <laughs> Look at him, he's so sad. He just you said he could have a nibble. How he does that is up to him. He is going to be oh. Wow. your personal space and what orifice does he have to nibble with josh josh don't listen to him you already got fooled by ditto on the bridge don't let it happen again <laughs> it already made you jump <laughs> it already made you, you just jump. got out of the hospital <laughs> you're you on your body cast i think i'm gonna give it to drowsy let's go yeah drowsy let's that's go. messed up all right so after all of that <laughs> in last place is will with two points josh and i did tie for second with three points Points. Peter Woo! comes away with first place and four points, and I'm going to make you Woo! a prize Ooh. on the spot here. Peter, I'm going to say that you get two things. You get Chansey's egg. Yeah. We've talked. <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> hey. talked it stinks. We've talked a lot about it. Egg. We don't know. We don't know the mystery behind it. We don't know the staunch behind it, but soon enough, you'll have all the answers. <laughs> and as a side prize, especially for a man who desperately loved the idea of Polly world getting is just desserts you also get this guy <laughs> the kid or the costume the kid, oh, the no. kid. man peter you get I, I guess we, dude maybe, i wish i got those maybe we do know why uh chancy was involved in that missing person's case <laughs> <laughs> came up to me and he goes, my whole life, you've been commanding me and telling me to do things and moves. Just do one move that I do. And I said, okay, what do you want me to do? And he jumps off the bridge and as he jumps, he goes, ditto. <laughs> <laughs>